بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وقضى ربك ألا تعبدوا إلا إياه وبالوالدين إحسانا إما يبلغن عندك الكبر أحدهما أو كلاهما فلا تقل لهما أف فلا تقل لهما أف ولا تنهرهما وقل لهما قولا كريما Thy Lord hath decreed that ye worship none save him, and that ye show kindness to parents. If one of them or both of them attain to old age with thee, say not fie unto them, nor repulse them, but speak unto them a gracious word. واخفض لهما جناح الذل من الرحمة وقل رب ارحمهما كما ربياني صغيرا And lower unto them the wing of submission through mercy and say, My Lord, have mercy on them both as they did care for me when I was little. الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من ولاه السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. يا أختي، just yesterday I received a phone call from my brother. so he called me and I was having a chat with him yesterday about how his mother had just passed away and his mother had just suffered septic shock basically and kidney infection that infection became systemic in the body and then she went to the ICU and I had to chat with the ICU doctors about whether we can pull the plug or not and subhanAllah it's a very very distressing thing for our son to have to discuss and then by Allah's mercy Allah took her soul away rather than us having to make a decision that we would regret. Uh, I remember Hadith Rasulullah in, um, in Adab al-Mufrad of al-Bukhari rahimahullah. Yeah, uh, amazing Hadith. It's a Hadith, it's an Athar actually, it's a narration, authentic narration from uh, Ibn Abbas that a man came to Ibn Abbas and said, uh, Ya Ibn Abbas, um, uh, I killed somebody. So can I repent to Allah? Is there any repentance for me? So Ibn Abbas uh, obviously said, I killed somebody in mistake, you know, by mistake. And uh, is there any repentance for me? So the man said, uh, you know, I, I didn't intend it. I, uh, I want to repent to Allah. So Ibn Abbas thought a little while and then he looked up the guy, looked, looked, looked at the person and said, uh, Oh, so-and-so, have, have you got a mother? The man said, No, yeah, Ibn Abbas, I don't. I don't have a mother. So Ibn Abbas looked down on the ground and said, Tayyib, uh, okay, ala kulli hal, repent to Allah, uh, make istighfar and pay the blood money and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you. So at that point, one of the students of Ibn, Ibn Abbas stood up uh, after the man had left and said, Ya Ibn Amr Rasulullah Sallallahu or the uh, son of the uncle of Rasulullah Sallallahu why did you ask whether this man had a mother or not? Uh, and at that point, Ibn Abbas said, I do not know of any deed that is more pleasing to Allah than being good to the mother. Yeah? And so the scholars mention in the explanation of this in Adab al-Mufrad, they said that here Ibn Abbas was suggesting to use goodness to the mother as a means to overcome the sin of killing someone. And ladies and gentlemen, as you know in Al-Islam, the obedience of the mother supersedes that of the father, precedes that of the father. It's in Al-Islam. As the Prophet ﷺ says to this man, as reported by Bukhari Muslim, when he came to him, who should be my best companion, Ya Rasulullah, my best friend, my closest companion. And then the Prophet says, Ummuk, your mother. Who's next? Your mother. Who's next? Your mother. And then the, the, the Prophet says, your father. You know what this kid did? He wrote a letter to his mom. Mom, I cleaned my room today. Ten dollars. I took the garbage out. Five dollars. 
I shoveled the snow, $15. I did the dishes, $20. I cleaned my room, so much, so much. And then at the end, total, total, whatever the total was, the mother took the same piece of paper, flipped it aside, and then she wrote, I carried you in my womb for nine months, bearing all the pain, free of charge. When I gave birth to you, I felt so much pain, terrible pain. I was screaming, giving birth to you, free of charge. When you were a baby, I used to feed you first before feeding anybody else, even before feeding myself, free of charge. When you used to get sick, I used to nurse you, stay the whole night with you, cry before Allah, making duha for Allah to give you shifa, free of charge. And at the end she says, total love. Your mother, your mother, ummuk. And we know how important it is to worship Allah Azza wa Jal and not to associate anyone else with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But here Allah Azza wa Jal mentions the importance of obedience to parents, the importance of parents in Islam, after what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about, the importance of worshipping Him. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنَ إِحْسَانًا That your Lord had ordained not to worship no one but Him and to be dutiful towards your parents and to be kind to your parents. In another verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا And worship Allah alone and do, not worship, and do not worship anyone else with Him and be kind to your parents. So again, Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about the importance of worshipping Him and only Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and not to associate anyone else with Allah Azza wa Jal. And then He mentions to be kind to the parents to be dutiful to the parents, to be respectful to the parents, to be obedient to the parents. And another verse, a third verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ, قل تَعَالَوْ أَتْلُوا مَا حَرَّمَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَيْكُمْ أَلَّا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Come and let me mention to you what your Lord had forbidden, what your Lord had forbidden upon you, is not to worship anyone beside Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and to be dutiful to the parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had mentioned, had mentioned in many verses the importance of worshipping Him alone. And we know that the greatest, the greatest sin of all is to associate someone with Allah. And here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions not to associate someone with Him. And then mentions the importance of parents and being dutiful to the parents, being kind to the parents, being obedient to the parents. In return... How important it is to obey your parents, to be kind to your parents, to be dutiful to your parents, to be respectful to your parents, to obey them, to listen to them, to care about them, to be there for them, disobeying them, not caring about them, not looking after them, is one of the major, major sins. It's enough said by the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, that the one who disobeys his parents, aqil walidain, Someone who disobeys his parents, someone who is disrespectful to his parents, would not enter the paradise. Would not enter the paradise. The Prophet ﷺ did not mention that over other important issues that we see in Islam, the way he mentioned that about someone disobeying his parents or her parents and someone disrespecting them. Someone who disrespects their parents, someone who disobeys their parents would not enter the paradise. So pray as much as you want to pray, and fast as much as you want to fast, and pay donations as much as you want to pay donations, you would not enter the paradise if you disrespect your parents. You would not experience the paradise if you do not take care of your parents. So your parents, your parents, your parents, your parents are so important. They are so important to you. They are your way to enter the paradise. They are your way to save yourself from the hellfire. 
So sometimes we don't really think about how heavy this issue is of being good to parents. We sometimes, you know, really belittle it. We think it's just like, okay, it's just a good deed. All right, it's easy to do. Phone call to my mom might make her happy, but you know, we're complacent with that. Even a, a small five, five ringed gift to my parents could sometimes make them happy. Some sweet you bought on the way, a calendar, you know, a tasbih, uh, a Quran CD, you know, something very simple sometimes make our parents happy. But we don't bother doing it because they think, you know what, it's a, it's a small deed. We glorify other things that are we, you know, we prepare for it, make sure we're going there. And Umrah, we're going to Makkah, Medina for Umrah or Hajj. You know, we really prepare very hard. But for being good to parents, we don't realize how grave and how amazingly uh, important and heavy the good deed is of being good to parents. SubhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He says, وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّاهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّ عِنْدَكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ وَلَا تَنْهَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا And your Lord had ordained not to worship no one but Him and to be respectful to, the, to your parents. If one of them, if one of them or two of them, referring to the parents, if one of your parents or two of them reached an old age, yes, when someone reaches an old age, when your father or your mother reaches an old age, they need to be taken care of the way you take care of a baby. So in other words, they're just a bigger baby. They are a bigger baby to be looked after. In a form of looking after a baby, cleaning the baby, feeding the baby, being always around the baby. This is it. When your parents get old, they need the same care and attention, if not more. So Allah Azza wa Jal says, if one of them or two of them reach to an old age and they are with you, look after them. Look after them. Take care of them. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفٍ And don't you ever say uff or utter a word that will make them upset. Utter a word that will show disrespect to them. Utter a word that will make them feel bad. Utter a word that will make them feel sad. Utter a word that will displease them from you. فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ أُفْ is a word. A word that shows being upset or what. You know, and this is the common word that we always use towards our parents. When our mother or father calls us, they call us, just we reply, what? What? In other words, what are you calling me for? You are bothering me. How many times do we do that? How many times when your mother and your father call you? They call you for, the, for something simple and easy. For something normal. And your reply is, what? In a manner that, what are you calling me for? Leave me alone. Is that how you speak to your parents? Well, Allah Azza wa tells you not to even say, off. Not to even utter a word that will show them that you are upset or upset them with it. If your mother or your father call them, you should obey them. You should leave everything that you have. You should leave the business that you are working. You should leave the computer that you're on. You should leave the training that you are in. You should leave the, the socializing environment that you're in. And listen to your parents. Your mother, your father, they are way to the paradise. And Allah Azza wa tells you not to even say, off. Your parents should be untouched, unharmed in any way or form. This is what the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And he said that three people, Allah would not look at them in the hereafter. Would not even speak to them. And one of them is someone who used to disrespect his parents. In the hereafter, Allah would not even look at you. And Allah would not even speak to you. Just straight into the hellfire. Is that the path you want to take? Is that the path that you want to follow? To be from amongst those who Allah would not even look at? Who Allah Azza wa would not even speak to? Just straight into the hellfire. Wal-iyadhu billah. Then from amongst those, those who disrespect their parents. Do whatever you want to do. Worship Allah the way you want to worship Him. Pray as much as you want to pray to Allah. Fast as much as you want to fast to Allah. Dana as much as you want to dana for Allah. Sacrifice whatever you want to sacrifice for Allah you're not going to see the pleasure of Allah only through your parents. Do whatever you want to do. Think as much as religious you might think you are, you are at the end of the day have no value in the sight of Allah only through your respect to your parents. I remember our Sheikh um, Ahmed Rashid al-Ruhayli, uh, one of the main students of Sheikh Shanqiti, and uh, 
So he was a, a great teacher for me, mashallah, he taught me so many things other than just knowledge. I learned manners from him and many things, the good manners from him, mashallah. And uh, the Sheikh, uh, I remember when his father passed away, uh, his father had a long battle with cancer and he passed away, rahimahullah. When he passed away, um, the Sheikh, you know, cried and he called me on the phone. And he said, uh, I read uh, in Tafsir al-Tabari uh, a narration uh, from the Israeliyat, but authenticated by Tabari in, the tafsir, in his Tafsir, that a man used to be good to his parents. Uh, and whilst he was good to his parents, Allah was good to him as well because he was good to his parents. And then when his parents passed away, Allah sent an angel down to him. And the angel told him, oh so and so, Allah was being good to you because of your goodness to your parents. Now that your parents have passed away, seek another means of being good and coming closer to Allah. When your mother, when your father call you, you should run to them and say, I'm here under your command. I'm here under your orders. Whatever you want, mother, whatever you want, father, if I can do it, I'll do it. You are my mother, you are my father. Don't show them any, any displeasure. Don't show them any upsetness. Don't show them any form that will make them displeased from you. وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا and say to them generous words. Say to them nice words. وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا Lower your wings. Lower your pride to your parents. Your mother and your father. As much as you lower yourself to them. As much as you humble yourself to them. As much as you lower your pride to them. That at the end of the day, you are their son and that are your mother and your father. Sometimes the shaitan comes to us and shaitan whispers in our ears and says, don't lower yourself to your mother. Don't lower yourself to your father. But have this pride towards your mother. Have this pride towards your father. Having pride over who? Over your mother? Over the woman that carried you and looked after you and cleaned you and fed you? Having pride over the one that was working during the day and night spending on you? Having pride over whom? Your father? Your mother? Does it make sense that someone has pride over their parents? Having pride over what? What are you trying to prove? What are you trying to prove? That you are better than them? Let you be the most richest. And let you be the most wealthiest. And let you be the most strongest. At the end of the day, you would not enter the paradise only through the pleasure. Let you be the strongest and the most wealthiest and the most influential. You would never ever please Allah if you don't please your parents. Let you be whoever you are. At the end of the day, that are your mother and that are your father. Respect them. Never disrespect them. وَاخْفِضْ لَهُمَ جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ Lower your wings to your parents. So, ya ikhwati, when we actually have our parents, we have the strongest way or one of the strongest way to seek forgiveness from Allah. We have one of the strongest way to make Allah happy. We have one of the strongest way to earn our Jannah. Wallahi, it is so easy when we have our parents. When they pass away, it gets difficult. What good deed can we actually do that can remove a massive sin that we did? What good deed? Because that's what you're meant to do. After you do a bad deed, you follow it up with a good deed. So what good deed can you do that can, you can follow up? I mean, the guy had killed somebody. Imagine that. So what good deed can you do that can overcome a massive sin that you've done? Wallahi, if you miss out on the chance of being good to your parents whilst you still have them with you, well, that's a, it's a big loss. It's a massive loss. So don't do that. Ever since I learned that lesson myself, I made up my mind that I'm going to make my parents one of my most stable ways to make Allah happy. So every day I give them a phone call. That's all all my, all, my, all my parents need, just a phone call. They don't want money from me. They don't want food from me. They don't even want me to look after them as yet. Alhamdulillah, my father's still strong. All they want is just for me to be in touch with them. When's the last time you called your parents? When's the last time you, know, you bought a gift to them? When's the last time you made them happy? It's enough the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, when a companion came and asked him, O oh, Messenger of Allah, 
or messenger of Allah, who should I please most? Who should I please most? He said, go to your mother, the paradise under her feet. Go to your mother, the paradise under her feet. What does that mean? If your mother steps on you, that's only, that's only a promotion for you to enter the paradise. And you could be one of those that Allah Azza wa Jal had written your way and your path to the paradise through the pleasure of your parents. وَاخْفِدْ لَهُمَ جَنَاحَ الذُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمُوْمَا كَمَا رَبَّيَانِ صَغِيرًا And say, oh my Lord, have mercy on them the way they had mercy on me when I was young. The way they had mercy on me when, when I was young. And then when you grow up and you become a man, a bit of hair on your chest and a bit of money in your wallet and a bit of muscles, a bit of muscles in your shoulder and your arms, you look down at your mother. And if she comes and she calls you, when you are around your friend, you scream and say, why you call me, embarrassing me? Leave me alone. And when she asks you to carry a bag, I've got no time. When she asks you to do a little job for her home, I'm too busy. Did you forget? Did your mother say that to you when you were hungry? Did your mother say that to you when you're thirsty? Did your mother say that to you when you're crying? And now you grew up and you became a man. You neglect your mother, you look down at her, you don't even care about her anymore. And your father, the one that spends, works so hard under the sun and works so hard during the day and night to bring that money so he could clothe you and feed you. And when your father asks you for the smallest thing, I'm too busy. Too busy for who? For your friends? Too busy for who? For TV? For a movie? Too busy for what? For football? Too busy making money? Is that what your father said when you were young? Is that what your father did to you when he used to take you to school? And come back and pick you up from school and look after you? Is that how it is now? After that many years of striving and sacrificing, is that the return and the payback to your parents? We remember one thing. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says, amongst the punishments that Allah azza wa jal will hurry the, his punishment upon his servants in this dunya is the punishment of disobeying your parents. When you disobey your parents in this world, Allah will punish you in the hereafter. But before the hereafter, Allah will punish you in this world. Before the hereafter, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish you in this world. So the way you treated your parents, Allah azza wa will make your children treat you. And the way you look down at your parents, Allah will send you a son to look down at you. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Very in the rida Allah, we rida al-walidayn. Wa sakhat Allah, we sakhat al-walidayn. Hadith is authentic. What did he say? Verily, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gets happy when your parents are happy. And Allah gets angry when your parents are angry. As simple as that. In the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa a sahabi was passing away and the, and the Prophet said, say, say La ilaha illallah. He couldn't say La ilaha illallah. Why not? Because his mom was angry with him. Mom was angry with him. It was authentically reported that, that the Prophet was very afraid at that point. He went, he sent the Sahaba to look out. The Sahaba went everywhere looking out and they found the parent, the mom of this particular Sahabi and she was angry. What was she angry at? The only fact is that that man used to prefer his wife over his mom. That's it. That's all it was. And that was enough for her to get angry. And there was enough for Allah to get angry at him. Subhanallah. So please don't make your parents angry at you. كَمَا تَدِينُ تُدَان The way you treat others, Allah will treat you. And Allah Azza wa Jalla brings someone, the way you treat others, Allah will send someone to treat you the same. كَمَا تَدِينُ تُدَان The way you treat others, Allah will send someone to treat you the same. The way you treat your parents, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send you a son and daughter to treat you that way. And that's when you start remembering the suffering that your mother and your father used to suffer from you. From your attitude, from your language, from your reaction. From your behavior, Allah will send someone the same. Remember, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you're dealing with. Allah azza wa jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that will retaliate for your parents. Allah azza wa jal is the one that will pay back for your parents. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one that will punish you over your disrespect to your parents. If you want the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah's pleasure is connected to your mother and your father's pleasures. Respect your parents and don't you ever disrespect them. Many of our young youth get so motivated and they want to go to jihad. Well, your first jihad is with your parents. If you are not fit 
to respect your parents, I guarantee you, you are not fit to be a mujahid. If you are not fit to be dutiful towards your parents, then I guarantee you, you would not be accepted by Allah Azza wa to be amongst those who fight for His sake. The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that, made that so clear, obedience of the parents is more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal than the jihad fi sabilillah, than fighting in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The hadith of Rasulullah states that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not look at three people on the day of judgment. The hadith is authentic in Bukhari. One of them is that the youth, the one who is not jealous over his women. The second is the one who, a man who dresses like a woman, a woman who behaves like a man or dresses like a man. Right? And number three is the aqun liwalide, the one who disobeys his parents. Yeah? And in one authentic hadith, a man came to the Prophet ﷺ from Yemen and said, Ya Rasulullah, I've come to join battle with you. He said, how have you left your parents? So he said, I left them crying. So he told them, go back and make them laugh just like you made them cry. And even a battle, jihad was not more stronger than the right of the parent on you. I asked my Shaykh, Shaykh, I've got three brothers, I've got two brothers. So I don't think I, I'm required. And Alhamdulillah, my two brothers are required. So my Shaykh reminded me, Saying, what if you are the Yusuf of your father? What if you are like Yusuf was to Yaqub? It didn't matter that he had 11 other children. It doesn't matter you have other brothers and sisters. You are the one. You need to look after your parents. You need to be good to them. It doesn't matter that there are other brothers and sisters. Yeah? It's your responsibility to look after them and be kind and merciful to them, inshallah. Because it didn't matter that you had other brothers when you were young. They looked after you just like as if you were the only child. So if that is the case, you look after your parents just like, the, you're like, just like you are the only support that, you, that they have. And he says, Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, alayhi salatu wa sallam, he says, Rida rabbi min rida walidain. The pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is from the pleasure of the parents. وَسَخَطِ الْرَبِّ مِنْ سَخَطِ الْوَالِدَيْنِ And the displeasure of Allah, the anger of Allah Azza wa Jal is from the displeasure and the anger of parents. Do you go out not worrying that your mother is not pleased from you? Your father is not pleased from you? Because that night that you go to sleep, knowing that your mother and your father are not pleased from you, then go to sleep knowing that Allah Azza wa Jal is not pleased from you. And that day that you stand in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, knowing that your mother and your father are not pleased from you, then you know who you'll be standing with. You'll be standing with those who Allah is not pleased from. Your mother, your father, respect them and obey them. One of the things that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had mentioned, that if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase in your provision, if you want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase from your sustenance and risk, one of those forms and ways for Allah to increase your risk is your, is your obedience to your parents. So if you see sometimes that life is difficult and you are financially not fit and for some reason or another your finance are not going the best way then maybe there's one thing you need to look at. Look at your parents. Are they happy from you or not? Are they pleased from you or not? Because one of the forms of Allah opening the risk His provisions and sustenance to His servants is through the pleasure of your parents. At the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, one of the companions was, was in his deathbed. And while he was dying, and was through, going through the agony of death, the companions were reminding him to say the shahada. And he was struggling to say the shahada. And they turned to him, say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah. And this man is struggling to say the shahada. So they went to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they mentioned to him about this man who's struggling to say the shahada and he's a believer. So the Prophet ﷺ said, is his mother alive? So they told him yes. So the Prophet ﷺ went to the mother and he asked her, are you pleased from him? So she said, no, I'm not pleased from him. So the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ asked her, be pleased from him. So she said, I am not pleased from him. So the Prophet ﷺ said, then if that's the case, gather timber, and get the wood and let us burn him and let him die that way. So straight away, the emotional mother that was probably so angry from her son said, no, 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 messenger of Allah, don't do that. I am pleased from him. The moment she said, I'm pleased from him, 
the pleasure of Allah came down on this man and his rahmah. And this man said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu rasulullah. That the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said from amongst their rights upon us, their rights, in this dunya they have full rights over us. They have rights. They have full rights over us. And when they grow, they still have rights over us. They have financial rights over us. They have, re- they have moral rights over us. They have ethical rights over us. They have all rights. And when they die, the Prophet alayhi salatu was salam said, amongst their rights upon you is to make dua for them. Constantly make dua for your parents. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those who are good to our parents, who earn Allah's favor and mercy by being good to them. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our children Make our children merciful to us just like our parents were merciful to us, inshallah. Zakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ala